Greetings, friends in faith. I'm Pastor Nathan Gragg, and I welcome you to this time of worship as we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are here in the corner of the sanctuary at Zion Lutheran Church in Lexington, and glad you are joining us from your corner of the world where you are. If you enjoy this worship resource, I invite you to share it with others and to visit zionlexsc.com for more ways to practice faith at home and to connect with others. This is worship for Palm Sunday, also called the Sunday of the Passion. It's the day that commemorates Jesus entering into Jerusalem and signifies the beginning of Holy Week. If everyone was here for worship, we'd begin outside for a palm procession, but we can't do that today. We can, however, do something. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to grab a, a plant or a piece of clothing or fabric whatever you can get your hands on where you are, a plant, a piece of clothing, something green, anything to hold up or wave. Go ahead. Get it now. I'll wait. Are you back? Okay, let's begin our Palm Sunday worship. When I say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, you say, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I invite you to take your plant or your piece of clothing and raise them in the air as we pray. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. This day, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless us, who lift up our hands to you now, Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to wave your branches and your garments as we sing, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 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 Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from the 21st chapter of Matthew's Gospel. A reading from Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the word of the Lord. I think we should give nurses and doctors a parade. Not that we could have a parade right now. Parades like most other festive events we might have had are a no-go. But still, I think we should give the nurses and doctors, the ones who are showing up to work right now, going to hospitals and infirmaries, some on the front lines among virus sufferers, give them a parade. We could line the sidewalks and blast some music, crepe paper and confetti everywhere as they came by. We'd wave and hoot and holler and take pictures to share. And there they'd be, these healthcare workers, dressed in their brightly colored scrubs, masked and gloved, walking into the doors for work, walking in to face what was coming. Could be sickness, could be suffering, could be death. Would that be odd? A parade right into the clinic, right into the emergency room, right into the testing center where you could tell someone the results are positive, meaning the bad positive, and life hangs in the balance, maybe even for you. Would that be a time for a parade? I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine, imagine what it was like for Jesus when he paraded into town, palms waving, voices shouting, paraded into Jerusalem and kept going all the way to the cross. Palm Sunday is a strange day, isn't it? At first glance, it seems festive. We dress it up like some sort of festival, some sort of celebration, with branches and garments, hosannas and glory, laud and honor. But it's a peculiar celebration. 
an ironic festival. Because what we are commemorating is the arrival of Jesus into the place where his life hangs in the balance, where there will be suffering and death. We heard the Palm Sunday Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 21. It tells of the intricate plan. Get the donkey and colt. Arrive into the city in just this way. This took place to fulfill the scriptures. We celebrate all that Jesus did to fulfill the scriptures and fulfill God's plans. But that means we have to remember the rest of the plan, the rest of the story. We have to be honest about what Jesus went to Jerusalem to do. Now we normally on Palm Sunday, we we normally also hear a reading of the Passion story. That's why we call it Passion Sunday too, because it has both these stories. The story of that day, that first Palm Sunday, and the story of Jesus' last day. But these are not normal times. And this is not a normal Sunday, so I'm not going to read Matthew chapters 26 and 27 to you now. I encourage you to do that at home today or in the coming days. But you know how it goes, don't you? As soon as Jesus arrived into the city, the powers that be started to conspire to get him out. And a few days after the colt and donkey carried him in to shouts of Hosanna, to shouts of crucify him, Jesus carried out a cross to a hillside to die. That shift, that truth, gives this day a different feel, casts a certain shadow It's the shadow of the cross, of suffering and death. For that's where Jesus went on purpose to fulfill God's plan. There's this old Palm Sunday hymn. Some churches used to sing it. I'm not sure if you ever did. It's called, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. And its words say, Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Ride on, Jesus, ride on to die. But that's Palm Passion Sunday. Today we wave and sing with lowly pomp and lavish praise as we recall the one who entered into the city, entered into the world to go to the place of death. And we're recalling the way it was with Jesus. Maybe we can better appreciate how it is with all those who must go to the place of death or put themselves in harm's way to serve this world that Jesus loves. Today, as we picture Jesus riding on, riding on in majesty, we can also picture those nameless faces masked and gloved, walking into the hospitals and health clinics around the world. We can picture the first responders called out to duty when everyone else is told to stay inside and stay away. We can picture all those whose vocations mean they must go to dangerous places and those who choose to be with the suffering and dying. The work that all these servants do is Jesus' kind of work. And we can take heart that Jesus goes with them, still riding on, to accompany them into the darkest and most dangerous places. Jesus has been there before. And Jesus reigns the risen one now to go there again and again. 
I'm not sure those who face down the coronavirus and all its terrors want a parade right now. Maybe someday when all this has passed. But I bet they need encouragement and something that sounds like hope. And that is something we can give them. So let us tell them, people of God. Tell them about the Jesus who doesn't flee, but goes where life hangs in the balance. Tell about the Jesus who doesn't remain on the parade grounds, but goes on where people experience death hillsides, hospitals, and homes. That's the Jesus we sing about today. The one we worship and adore this holy week. The one we can turn to always. Amen. Together, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, even from a distance, 
we are connected to your people because we are connected to you. Help your church to find a voice to proclaim your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us hope-filled words to speak that we may sustain the weary with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek solutions to the challenges facing the world. Bring hope to those who face uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, injury, or illness. Heal the infected, comfort the dying, Bring peace to those who are suffering alone. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially those we name now aloud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, Help us boldly confess Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord who goes into the difficult and dangerous places of our world come to you this day to bless you and keep you, to shine on you with grace and mercy, and to look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>